Ladies and gentlemen, support for this podcast is brought to you by xbrain.co.uk for all of your on-depart Viking-based supplement needs and a promo code fighting words to save 30% off your order. Support, as always, is brought to us by our boys at Market Squawk, powered by livesquawk.co.uk for all of your low-latency data, news, financial information of any sort. Live Squawk powers marketsquawk.co.uk. Tonight, we're joined by an absolute legend of the British boxing scene, newly crowned IBO light middleweight world champion, Sam the Savage Eggington. How are you doing? Good, sir. I'm all right, mate. Yeah. I'm all right, yeah. Mate. Been a long day. <laughs> yeah. Always, always a long day. Start the six weeks holiday, doesn't it? Yeah. It's, um, yeah it's, it's, it's tough. How are you? Um, obviously, this is exactly what people want to hear, but I don't care. How are you? How are you handling? How old are yours? I've got an eleven-year-old, an eight-year-old, and a two-year-old. Hey, but it's too many kids. It's one too many so, kids. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. I didn't know that before I started. Though. <laughs> yeah, eleven-year-old and eight-year-old. That's nah, great, isn't all, it? They're all gold, man. They're gold. They 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 have their moments, but they're all gold. Yeah. So, from a fan's perspective. You are one hundred percent pure and utter value, right? Yeah. You've you've been around for what feels like thirty years, but you're <laughs> twenty eight. You know, you you just like you you're coming into now what from from a fan's perspective can only be described as peak, which is amazing. And you've just nicked a yeah. world title. You must be absolutely buzzing. Yeah, I feel good. And do you know what it is? Yeah, I know like. Just like you said, I'm coming into my peak. I feel it, you know, more than anything. And I know people say that to people have to say that in it, you know, mm. I feel good, you know, I feel great. But I do feel it like and the numbers don't lie, you know, I'm in the gym and, and the numbers don't lie. So but yeah, just like you said, I, I, I feel it. I feel I feel better, you know, I enjoy it. Um and the numbers don't lie, you know, I feel great. I mean, the last bout was just like it, it wasn't even close you just bludgeoned that poor boy like he got absolutely <laughs> and utterly but like yeah. respect to him for being that tough but you bashed the fuck out of him right for yeah. 12 rounds it was no you know joke was? whatsoever so, uh, i i i don't because you know what it is uh you know I, it's well known that I, I don't love boxing yeah I'm, i didn't mm. get into boxing because so i don't normally have the fight nerves you know it's win lose or draw for me as long as the outcomes in come but with this one, I actually got him. Like, I was genuinely nervous. I badly, badly wanted to win. Mm. And I think it showed in the first three or four rounds. I went wild a few times where I didn't have to. Um, and I, I said, yeah, it was, it was, I was trying too hard. You know, uh, I really wanted to get it done and just get the win and, and get home. <laughs> uh, I think it showed, like, like I say, in, in, in oh. five before, I just kind of, I warm into it and I get my work off. With this one, I really wanted to just get in there, get it done, get the win, and get home with about. So, so yeah, I mean, think it's uh, has something changed in you, like in you as a man, as a fighter. I think, I think it was just this one. You know, I've done yeah. everything. Um, I've won everything. This was, you know, the, the cherry on the cake. Um, mm. And I, I just felt like if it didn't happen this time round, I was never going to get another opportunity at this. So. I think I think you know on the build up to this fight, I felt that you know I felt it massively. I thought it's either now or or it's never. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm either gonna I'm either gonna win this and do some do something good, or I'm gonna lose and I'm, I'm gonna be sort of a gatekeeper for, for you know for up and comers, or I'm gonna retire. Mm. So I really felt that, um, and I think it showed in the first few rounds. I was I was getting screamed at in the corner just to calm down, just to. Just to win the fight, you don't need big knockouts. Just win the fight, and in the end, that's how it went. But, but yeah, I think I think early on, I think you know it showed a bit. So I mean, because the, the the commentary lot aren't shy to say it every time that you're on fire. They'll say that you went in the gym with the intention of being a journeyman. Like, yeah. is that that that's yeah, fact? That, you went in yeah. there and you just went, I'm I'm going to be a journeyman. I'm going to make a living from having rounds. Yeah. yeah. So well, it was you know Craig Cunningham, be a go go. Yeah. I think it's from... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Craig Cunningham, we went to the same amateur gym and um, he was turning professional, you know, proper. He tried to, you know, really, he's really putting it in. And I got made redundant from my, um, my forklift job at the time. Okay. Um, and I rang him off and I heard about this journeyman thing and I rang him up and said, look, I'm going to come to your gym. 
can you have, put me in contact with your manager in China? And I just want to go on the road. Because at this point, mm. I had my 11-year-old and he was about, you know, he must have been a few months old. So I had no choice but to earn money because it weren't just me. Like, if it was just me, I'd have probably just carried on and tried to find a new job. But at the yeah. time, I had nothing else. And I just said to said to Craig, look, bring me, take me there. I'll be a journeyman. And we went away for the first fight and we won it against a kid who was 4-0 or, 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 or something like that. Um, but he was unbeaten and, and I beat yeah. him. So he went up straight away. <laughs> that's, that's mad. <laughs> Love like, that. Yeah. How, how much had you boxed before you decided to be a journeyman? I, I'd done the amateur stuff, like, don't be wrong, I had yeah. amateur fight. But again, it was just something that I didn't love it. I didn't, I don't, even now, I don't stay up and watch the late night boxing. If the boxing's not on the TV, I don't pay for it or nothing like that. It's just <laughs> something that I, I, I sort of fell into. We've done it as kids, me and brothers, mainly just because no one else done it. You know, it kind of separated us from the rest of them. And, you know, we had our own little thing. Other people played football, other people done this, other people done that. And, and we boxed. Um, yeah, so before I turned professional, I'd quit for about a year or so. Like mm. I said, I had a job and I had a son. Um, I'd, I'd moved out my, you know, my parents' house. I was about, I think I was about sixteen when I moved out, and then I had my son when I was seventeen. So yeah. I had no choice but to earn some money from somewhere because not only did I have my son, but I had rent to pay. <laughs> but then, like you, you've done Commonwealth, you've done British, you've done. Yeah. Areas you've done like now you're a world title holder like you you know you're a world champion. And look at the scalps yeah. you've taken along the way as well. He, exactly, <laughs> that's what I was gonna say next. Like you know, you know Frankie Gavin's no joke. One of the one of the most illustrious amateurs ever to come out of this country. Yeah. Paulie Malinowski. Paulie. Listen, I thought you done Cheeseman last time around. Mate, listen, listen you're not the only one. Trust me. Yeah, trust I me. thought they'd done you a little bit dirty in Eddie's garden. 100%, to be honest, hundred percent. But look, yeah. if he's like, but you know what has me as well? You know, um, so all the setbacks, I genuinely believe the setbacks are the reason I get the fights I get. So yeah. if I didn't lose against the African and then fight Liam Smith, I probably wouldn't have got the, the, the fight in Italy anyway. They wouldn't have wanted yeah. it if I weren't losing. So they thought they was just yeah. going to get me over, ex-European champ, we'll blast him out and, you know, we'll look good. So I beat the kid in, um, in Italy. And that's what put me on to the achievement fight. Um, and I won that fight. And we could have moved yeah. on from there. But it is what it is. We lost there. And even then, you know, I weren't getting much favours from, you know, um, the people I was with then. So we moved. We moved on. And, and again, it's, it's, you know, it's done me wonders. Um, everyone thought it was going down all from then. And, you know, there's nothing but good, good work for me. So now you're, you know, you're, you're at world level now. And I saw something today that it was Dennis Hogan's being... The one yeah. that you're going to be fighting, are you going to go out to old Ian's neck of the woods out in Oz? Is that? I don't think I, I, I don't think that's all um, concrete. I mean, I think I've okay. got him next. I think he's mandatory, but I don't think um, the trip to to Australia is is, is concrete. Um, no. I think there's a few things got to happen before we know where it is and who's pulling it on and stuff like that. But I have to wait yeah. and see. Listen, a trip to Oz. <laughs> Book my ticket. I'm happy to go. But, um, <laughs> But I don't know. I don't know if it's. Um, I don't know if it's all sorted like that yet. Wait, how do you feel about? Because like light middle in the UK is like a thriving weight. Yeah. Like you got Troy. You got Josh Kelly. You you know Cheeseman's up there now. Metcalf. You yourself. Like it's there's big big names running around. Yeah. Like are you are you up for the domestic ones or is it purely like you said <laughs> income pay me I'll do it. I mean, if I'm honest, pal, yeah, I don't feel like anyone domestically is worth risking it for if that makes sense because mm. I'm not like, like you're saying I'm not I'm not slagging anyone off they're all quality opposition yeah so that's the reason I'm saying unless someone's got something for me to win some, yeah. some that give benefits me you know there's no real point in any of them um, I mean Troy's got the British mm-hmm. Josh Kelly's I think he's fighting Friday isn't he, for um, a WBO international mm. he certainly um, is so I don't I don't see what anything any of them got for me if I'm honest. Um, but look, like I say, if if the check's big, you give me a shout. I love that. See, now it's it's really nice to because obviously you are a prize fighter and you are fighting yeah. for prize. But you, you know, there's a lot of guys that are like, I'm passionate about it. This is my life and this and that, and it yeah. is your life. You live it, and you you know you can see that. But by the way you fight, but. You are there to feed your family at the end of the day, 100%. right? And do you know what it is? I think. 
I started off as a journeyman, so because you know that was always that was always the case. Journeyman, it's always about earning money, in it, and that then that was that was the plan. And people think now because you've I've won a few titles that 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 plan goes out the window and, and another plan jumps on board. But mm-hmm. the plan is always to be to be comfortable. Um, and not only me, but you know, like I say, I've got three kids and a missus and a house. And if I can do anything that will make them more comfortable, you know, in life in general, then that's what I want to do. Um, the bouts are lovely, and I love them, but none of them pay the mortgage. Yeah, no, of course not. And that's so from the perspective of you, right? Do you fancy now going for, you know, the Charlos, the Tim Zoos, the to to really test out world level and see where you stand? Or um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I've got mandatory. You yeah, know, when, when I finish with a the mandatory, then hundred percent. You know, that's so that's that's the only thing that's next, isn't it? Um, I've got I've got to, um, I've got to push for that. You know, you have to. Otherwise, what do I do? Yeah. Especially now, like you said, you're 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 peaking. You're coming into your peak. Like we've we've seen a non-complete savage, you know, fucking lighting up the the crowds for years. Yeah, and look, going to be capable of now. Do you know what it is as well? I, I think this 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 last this last fight, obviously that that policy. I think people are looking at that thinking, Sam ain't really got much left if he didn't blast that kid out. I mean, he was unbeaten. Um, oh, he was, mate, he was mate. hard it, as anything. Yeah, it been, it's a double edged sword. You blast him out, he weren't very good. You don't blast him out, you're not very good. So yeah, mm. you can't you can't do you can't do right from doing wrong. But again, um, like you say, I just want to. I need to get get rid of um, Hogan, and then pass that. Doesn't you know? I have to. I have to be. Um, and I know it sounds daft because you know these kids are unbeaten and and they're for you know and they're making loads of money and they're, they're, they're top of the game, but. Who else do I, who else do I pick? Who else do I go for? Do you know what I mean? It, yeah. The only the only thing next after a mandatory is the one the other kid was about, and and that's where that's where I'm heading. So in a theoretical, say Josh Kelly materializes the potential that he could be, right? Yeah. And there's some sort of Wasserman wizardry that goes on, and they they navigate him into a position for your strap. Are you are you gonna go for like the big British dust up? Because to be honest, you're gonna get paid, right? That's that's always the thing with the domestic clash. You know they're gonna pay you a fortune for that. It's funny because someone asked me a question like this the other day. They said, "Listen, you can box for all the bouts mm. for hundred grand, or you can box for no bouts and be set for life." Yeah, there's no question. There's no question. Whoever pays, if I have to fight Josh Kelly and it's big dough, or I can fight Charlo for less, I'm fighting yeah. Josh Kelly. Yeah. It's just that simple. It's yeah. just that simple. I don't, I don't, I don't dislike anyone. You know, I, you've saw any, every, all any of my wins. I don't get in anyone's face. I'm not. Nope. Just my job. I just turn up and I do what I have to do, and and that's and that's how I see it. Um, that's how I see it. I work hard to do what I do, but I don't dislike anyone. It's my job, and and, and that's what I turn up to do. See, that's that's such a refreshing attitude, and it's such a good attitude to have. Like we we don't really have many many guests on here that are like beefing with people anyway we'll have like yeah. both both sides of the row and stuff like that but they're never really that angry yeah, with people yeah. but it's it's wicked to hear that so when will you know about oz slash hogan slash well from what i've heard i mean um i spoke to john pay today manager he, he said um so sky's putting something together from what i've heard um and i think their team are putting something together so you know, whoever I presume it, it, it's purse bids. If not purse bids, it, it's whoever can pull out the best mm. deal. Then you know, everyone nods their head to. So whoever pulls out the best deal, I mean, it shouldn't be shouldn't be far off. Um, nah, I reckon you just need to smash the fuck out of a YouTuber, make some bank. <laughs> oh mate, <laughs> <laughs> any YouTuber, mate. If I could get hold of a YouTuber, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, they make it. Uh, do you know what? It's, it's irritating to watch, but. Cause, Cause, you slag it, and you're like, "Ah, oh, he shouldn't be boxing." But do you know, if he tried to fight me, and he was making me millions, then I wouldn't slag it so much. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> yeah. you can dig it out as much as you want, but if they offered you the fight, you'd be training. Yeah, fast, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's a double-edged sword. Like you, it, it shouldn't probably shouldn't be getting the publicity and the hype around her. But again, but that's what they do, though, isn't it? 
Yeah. You're a, you're a fighter. You fight and get publicity from fighting. They yeah. get publicity and then fight for more publicity. It's fucking I mean, wild. I remember that, um, do you remember when KSI fought the brother? Yeah. yeah. The MEN was, was it the MEN? It was, yeah, it was the MEN. Full of, yeah. Full of 13 year old girls, literally just the whole MEN was packed full of 13 year old girls watching the boxing because just because of their YouTube following, it was, it was crazy. Okay, so like he's insanity. doing a he's doing a pay per view in a couple of months. Yeah. Are you going to disown pay per view with K? Like, who's who's watching that? It's crazy, man. Like I say, it's uh, millions of followers. It's just you know, it's but, people from oh. twelve year olds that that go on YouTube and and they're like, Dad, can we have this? Yeah, it's done. And you know, if a million kids ask, you know, you're gonna get you know a few hundred thousand that say yeah, yeah. I think the maddest thing Rob sent me through the breakdown of now there's like influencer titles and uh, the world title is not like best in the world. It's that they're an influencer in the world. And then there's like a breakdown of where that is like, what the fuck is happening? Or if you're only from YouTube followers or views and it's crazy. It's crazy. But like I say, I'm not going to just slag it because if, if anyone rang me to fight, yeah, Logan Paul or KSI, I'll be on the first plane, card, I'll be there, mate. <laughs> In a heartbeat, mate. I DM these white collar, like, the, I'm an undefe- undefeated white collar icon. I've had one bout. I'm <laughs> always messaging these lot, like, look, I don't know if we qualify as celebrities or influencers, but I'll have a crack. Let's have a fucking go. You got you know what, I thought about setting up my own YouTube channel, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do it. How many views I'll get? Do it. It don't matter. Just got to keep doing it and doing it and doing it. The social media is enough. You just got to get I'm one of them. Social media, really, so. Yeah, well, that's, I see. This is where you need like a couple of kids that just do it for you and they just film you yeah, just man. bashing out the bag and, you know, being on the assault bike. So how much are you now? So we've got world title status, right? You're now moving into this, this global animal that you are. Are you going to be changing anything or are you just going to carry on doing exactly as you've been doing uh, i've always said the people have always asked this and i say look it's never been the plan to go in and have a tear up but yeah it's what i do well um and the coach has always said to me you know we can work on bits don't get me wrong you know not being too greedy you know not being stupid and things like that but mm-hmm. i go in and i have a fight and i do it well so it's best to work on what you do well and better it than than something that you're not really used to yeah. and you, you know, you, you, you're just trying too hard to, to pull some off that, you know, it's not natural. Um, I mean, I think my head movements got a bit better. I'm, I'm, I'm avoiding a few more punches, but at the end of the day, when it, when it all, when, when it, we're past halfway mark in the fight and it, mm. you know, everyone starts to, to die down, you know, that's just when I'm, you know, warming up. Um, and that's what yeah. I do well, you know, I, I'll get in there and I throw a lot of punches and, and I'm, I'm intense and, you know, it wins me fights and, you know, so I'm not going to be changing anything anytime soon. So, uh. We always use the example with um, Maidana when he fought Mayweather. Like the first time, he was just fucking slugging him left, right and center, yeah. unorthodox shots. And remember in the second one, they tried to like make him a boxer. It's like, yeah. like that was, that was his asset. Like, like it was unexpected. But now like he's prepared for that shit. Like why yeah. change it? It's a, that's why I always think if as long as, it's really with training and anything like that, you know, it doesn't matter what the, the kid could be, you know, like I say, running, running up mountains, you know, swimming the Thames. It don't matter. As long as I'm doing what I've got to do, yeah. You don't want to be it swimming the Thames. doesn't matter what, do you know what I'm saying though? It doesn't matter what, yeah. what, what anyone else is doing. You know, they can be doing 15, 20 rounds of sparring at a time. As long as I'm fit and I'm ready to go. Yeah. I don't care who you're sparring, um, where you're training. What, what you're doing. Nah, you know, I'm ready. So, you know, and, and that's it. I'm ready. As a, as a fan and new best internet friend, if an opponent of yours has been filmed swimming in the Thames and they are not dead, don't <laughs> fight them because they're not they're not okay. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No, you know, just, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I'm just saying, <laughs> just saying. But if that if that ever comes up, say, look, I want this geezer drug tested or I need a priest or something <laughs> because you swim in the Thames, mate. You're doing laps in that. You're in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> You know, it's the only thing that will come to mind, but do you know what I mean? It don't matter what do anyone's yeah. as long as, as long as I've done what I have to do, um, it shouldn't matter. Um, I'm fit and I'm ready to go. See it. So from your, your illustrious career so far, 
who's been the like what was it like fighting Paulie? What was it like doing a build up with Malinaji? Do you know what? We, as Mal, we only done one press conference really. Um mm. we were there for the week, we done one press conference. Um but it, it weren't it weren't too bad really. You know what? Paulie's a good guy as well. You know, I still talk to Paulie now. Like if he's ever in Britain, he always rings my manager out, look, come for something to eat. Um you know, my manager and my trainer now still sends him my sparring videos, you know, my opponent's videos. And he still comes back with stuff. Oh, what's the work? Do this, do that, work on this. Um, yeah, that's awesome. He's a good guy. But the week was, you know, it was quite it was quite calm. You know, we bumped heads a few times, walked past each other. But nothing crazy. The craziest thing was the way, you know. I don't know what what was happening, but we got into <laughs> people's face a bit. But nothing like, nothing crazy. It's only because my, my clothes were on that side and his clothes were on that side. So we had to walk past each other. Yeah, because we walked past each other, it looked, it was like, I don't know, we both thought something was happening and we just kind of stared into his face. But other than that, nothing really. It was, it was all right. No, no real, no real um, tension at all. So when did that, did, did you get a, the call for that? And you're like, what, like, two weight poorly, like poorly, poorly. Yeah, yeah. Like, do you know what it was? Was that a bit I was, surreal? I was managed for the European at that point. Yeah, I said, to, I said to my manager and coach, I said we can leave that out. We don't need that. <laughs> we don't need that at all at this point. But yeah. Euro, um, Malinardi wanted to win the European, and it is Italian, so he wanted yeah. to win the European. So it was like, um, so I suppose foreign eliminator. I suppose, but I was saying to my coach, look, we're mandatory now. Let's leave that out. We don't need like a little tricky, you know, world beat trying to come over here and 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 trick me out of it. Um. But again, it was, you know, it's pay-per-view of chief support. Mm-hmm. It was just an opportunity that, you know, we couldn't say no to. Um, so we took it and, it, you know, it ended up well. But, but yeah, it was, um, it was one that I didn't really want to, you know, have any part of, if I'm honest. Yeah, for sure, because it's, it's just hard to look good against him, isn't it? He's one of them yeah. ones. Yeah, and it is nice to hear you still speak because he is, like, from, from a fan's perspective... I miss him on the mic. I think he's the best analyst that there's been. I yeah, honestly good. do. You know what, he's fair as well. You know, he's in the own corner. If you're not yep. doing well, he will say, you know, live on, live on air. So yep. you need a few more like and that. And he doesn't um, give a fuck. Nah, nope. no cares at all. He'll tell you the I, truth. Yeah. Yeah. I always remember the golovkin Kel Brook fight. When that when the shot landed that bust um, Kel's face, Paulie was the first one to say his cheekbone's gone. And then yeah. the commentary team was like, shut the fuck up, Paulie. Paid a lot of money for this fight, and he's like, No, 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 you lot don't know. I've had that before. Like, he's cheap, like, he's got it. And then he spent like a round and a half arguing with people, like, You got to respect that. Yeah, yeah, um, you always know like that to be fair. When the uh, the Frankie Gavin fight come on, because like Frankie Gavin is, is a uh, I don't want to say cautionary tale, but he's uh, unfulfilled potential, is what he was, right? 100%. So, was what was that like to, to fight him? Because no. It, it, so we were meant to fight the year before, weren't we? Yeah. And he got his foot crushed by a, um, a delivery truck or something. I don't know. Um, and then I said to my coach, I said, we're never doing that again. I said, mm. if there, because, you know, I sparred Frankie um, early in my career up until about the Midlands title. I sparred yeah. him. We, we trained at his gym. At one point, we didn't have a gym. And we trained at his gym all the time. We were sparring him. And the amount of times he made me look stupid and just... <laughs> You know, you know, how Frankie boxes. He just makes me yeah. look stupid, and you know, you know, I'm a boxer. Like I'm forward, and I'm on my front foot, and you know, we can just make you look daft. Yeah. Um, so we were meant to fight, and he got cancelled. And I said to my coach, you know, <laughs> we dodged him, would it? There, <laughs> let's leave that one out. <laughs> you know I mean? Um, but then obviously it came up the year after, and we was just like, we had no real choice, really. You know, it, it was it was a big fight for Birmingham. You know, the the, the promoters wanted it bad, and um, mm-hmm. it just signed by the same promoter um, so it come up but there was a few there was a bit of bad blood there to be fair you know he said a few things that I was you know I thought I took bad um, yeah. luckily enough my manager and coach um, John Pegg he went online and had a few spats with him which <laughs> left me alone literally yeah, yeah, the whole perfect. camp left me alone and they just and John, John, John would just go online every night and have a little dig back at each of them and it would just it would just take the mind off me completely, and it was all just going at John, and John was like, "I don't give a fuck." <laughs> I'm just <laughs> and like, you literally worked to a t- the whole camp. It worked, um, yeah. So I just you know what it is with Frankie. Everyone knows you know he's really good, but mm. 
it 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 doesn't live the life. Yeah. Like he you know, for the way he boxes, he doesn't live the life. You know, he's on his feet. You know, throws. You know, fast punches, moves his head. You need a lot of energy for that shit. So the the plan was, look, just just go at him, yeah. Even if you lose a round, make mm-hmm. sure he works double hard to win that round. Just and at one him. point, he'll, yeah. And at one point, he'll 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 he just won't be able to hack it anymore. Um, and that's literally what I done. Um, I just went at him threw as many shots as I could. You know, whether I missed or I hit him, yeah, I just threw him. Um, <laughs> and even the round he won. You could see, you know, when you watch it back, you can see he's going back to the corner, taking big, deep, big, deep breaths, and it was just a plan. It was, it, and it worked. You know, it, it worked. It really did. Yeah. I mean, like from from like Frankie's perspective, like he he's like massively talented, obviously, yeah. and like like you said, uh, uh, just a a virtuoso. But there's there seems to be the ones that are super talented. And they transcend it and they can get away with it just on their talent, like a James Tony who never trained. You never see that kid yeah. anywhere near a treadmill. But he would still be able to do 12 rounds. He'd still be able to do it. But then, like, Frankie was obviously that just that, that notch below that where he had yeah. all the skills he still needed to work. He still needed to do all the other stuff. And it just never yeah. was to. It's a shame. But I think, you know, with Frankie, he right for you. And, um, and I think making weight was his training. I think that was it. Because mm. he could put a gym after that. Um, yeah, and he trained with us for a bit. He had a few fights with us. Cool guy. Just at the time, we, we was we was up against each other. It's brilliant, though. Like the best, the best. I mean, I know, I know, like, I'm quite, I don't know, friend with Frankie, but still the best win in my career. You know that. Um, you know that the, the arena was half and half. It was fucking yeah. unbelievable. Um, the whole run up to it, you know, everyone sold loads of tickets. It was unbelievable. It was a great so, event. Still the best wicked, night in my event. Yeah. That's What's cool. been the hardest night of your career so far? I mean, it's hard to say really because they're all hard, aren't they? You know, no fights are easy, no. I suppose. But um, I can't say because obviously I fought that French kid a few, well, it was last year, wasn't it? Mm. Um, everyone went wild about that fight. But in the fight, it it was a hard fight, don't get me wrong, but it didn't feel any harder than the fight before or the fight before okay. that. Just, they're all just hard. Mm, so yeah. it's hard to say really. I mean, the hardest, it's hard to tell you what the hardest fight. I mean, all my fights are hard because I make them hard and I get involved. And so I can't really say really, but they're all, they're all hard. They're all hard. True. With, with um, Cheeseman too, when, you know, they, oh, you know, they did you a little bit dirty. Did you have a little word with Ed afterwards? You'd be like, mate, what the fuck was that? Like, nah. do you know what it is as well? I, I never really, um, I, I never really, had any word you read? You know, mm. I, I was out with Barry Hearn all the time. Yeah. Because um, he loved you, wouldn't it? Yeah, man. I look at, yeah, Barry Hearn's a good guy, man. I went to his uh, book sign the other day. It's a funny guy, man. But yeah, so I didn't, I didn't really have any. But as soon as I got out of the ring, Eddie went, mm. uh, we'll do that again. I was like, fucking, yeah, we'll do that again. <laughs> uh, and then that was the last I heard of it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, what's going on here? And, Next thing you know, you know, he's fighting other people. And I was gutted. I was gutted because, do you know what? Not only that, but it was a good fight. You know, a big it fight. Really this fight would have been bigger than the first one. 100%. Yeah. It would have been huge. We could have top headlined our own show doing it. But, but yeah, I got out of the ring. Went, oh, we'll do that again. That was the last I heard. I bet he wants to do it again now. Probably. There's a few people that want to do it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, but yeah, so I was good because, like I say, it's, it's a fight that, you know, we, we could have we could have made some good money off it as well. You know, the set, the rematch. We could have topped yeah. our own show. I mean, like I said, I'd, I'd have done, I'd have went to London for it. You know, I wouldn't have moaned. So it's what it is, but, you know, it's kind of... If he calls, you're just going to go, yeah, yeah, we got to do that. And then just yeah. fucking leave. <laughs> We're in next week. <laughs> on the I was way to Oz. Man. I was yeah. gutted. Yes. Um, Streets, do you have anything for the champ? Mate, that was like... Oh, it's fucking brilliant. You know what I mean? Fucking good. And I just love... It's so refreshing, like, your outlook on it. It's fucking good to hear, man. Like, savage and ring, right mentality for it. It's fucking... <laughs> it's good. Just keep doing it, brother. It's awesome to hear. Do you know what it is? I just think, if I'm asked the question, tell the truth. If you tell the truth, you can't look a prat the next time someone asks it. <laughs> that's you know that's it. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I just... It's the truth. You know, no one wants to... No one wants to get punched in the face, but everyone's got the reasons, don't they? 
Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking some true. of the websites I look at. Maybe those people, <laughs> maybe those people like to pay for such things, but I'm just saying. Whatevs, man. <laughs> The Savage, mate, thank you so much for joining us, man. Really, really appreciate no it. Have a great no night. Keep it up, Cheers, Jeff. Bye -bye. Cheers, pal. Catch you in a bit.